Hello everyone, today we're going to be talking about how to do the CRUD operations from a remote API in your Rails app. And we're going to be doing this in a way that's a lot faster than the previous method where we just use the get request from HTT party. In this case, we're going to be using a uh, tool called Active Resource. And there's a gem available. I'll have a link to both the documentation as well as the gem in the video description. Basically, the gem allows you to pretty much work with the models as a RESTful resource. It's going to be very similar to how you normally just use a model in your application uh, with a couple tweaks that we'll have to do. But overall, this is going to, but overall, this is going to be a much faster approach than what we used previously. So to get started, we're just really quickly going to create a basic API. So I'm going to go ahead and type Rails new. I'm going to call it API, and then we're just going to pass in the API flag. This is just going to be used so we have an API to like do the requests from. Uh, you can really do this with anything. Maybe you have like an online bookstore. You want to grab the books from there, create new books at that remote repository or delete books or whatever. Uh, it's going to function essentially the same way as long as their uh, like resource matches sort of what you're expecting. So uh, now that we have this, I'm going to CD into our API. I'm going to run a Rails G scaffold. I'm going to call it post. Uh, you can call it whatever you want to. I'll give each post a title and a body of type text just so we have something to work with. And then I'll go ahead and I'll run this. We can then go ahead and run a Rails DB colon migrate command. And then we can run a Rails S command to start this API server. We'll come over to localhost port 3000. We can then go over to slash posts assuming I can type, and we'll see this empty uh, set of br brackets here. I can type rails C, do a post.create. I'll give it a, uh, a title of test and a body of case. And then we can exit out of here, run a Rails S again. And then when we refresh, we expect to see that here inside of our JSON. Okay, so this is clearly working. We're now going to leave this API alone and go create our actual Rails app that is going to consume this API. So we'll say Rails new. Uh, we can call this whatever we want to. I'll just call it consumer. We'll give it a uh, dash J of ES build and a dash C of bootstrap. This will take a little bit longer, uh, but it'll make the app look nicer. You don't have to do this. This is just a step that'll add like an extra minute to this video. Uh, but hopefully it'll, you know, make everything look a bit better so that our eyes don't bleed while we're, while we're trying to, to work on this. So the basic idea is we're going to go in here, we're going to add in the gem that we need, and then we're going to generate a similar scaffold to the one we have on the remote uh, API, just so that we have all of the boilerplate built for us. And then I'll show you how to modify it, but you don't need to generate a scaffold for this. So I'll go ahead and CD into our consumer, run a code dot. Uh, the reason why we're doing this is just because being able to generate a scaffold that matches sort of what your remote resource looks like, it just illustrates how similar it is to the basic Rails app. And then I can just cover like sort of what we're missing. So we'll start by doing a Rails G controller, not controller, a Rails G scaffold for the post. We'll give each post a title and a body of type text. We can hit enter on that. Now we're not going to run this migration. We're actually going to come into our DB folder, our migrates, right click that migration and delete it. We're not migrating our database for this because we're not using our database. We're using the API's database that already has the post in it. So we can just forget about that. Now, the other thing is because we're running our API on port 3000, we need to change our proc file here to run this Rails app on some other port. You can say port 3001, port 5000, whatever. The way you run a Rails server on a different port, let's say you're not using ES build, you just type Rails S dash P 3001. That'll cause it to run on port 3001. Okay, so that's pretty much it for that setup. We can get rid of that. Now we want to add to our gem file the active resource gem. Uh, I want to run bundle add active resource. This will give us the ability to sort of work with these models. So what I can do now is I'll just say, um, let's just do a bin slash dev. This is the same thing as running rails s-p 3001. Then we'll come over to port 3001 and refresh. And we'll see that we're back at the basic uh, root of the Rails app. So let's come into our routes. Let's create a new line here. And I'll just say the root should be the post controller and the index action. We haven't used this model in our database. It doesn't exist in our database. So when we try to refresh, it'll tell us there's no such table as posts. So how do we fix this? Well, we come into our app, our models, and our post.rb. We change this application record here with the active resource uh, colon colon base. 
And then we just set this self.site to be whatever our API is. So remember, our API is running on localhost port 3000. If we were using the Barnes & Noble API, we would change this to something like HTTPS API.BarnesAndNoble, and then like that. Just assuming this is how it works, .com slash v2. I guess this might even be a thing. I don't know. Uh, I know it's not really the point of this video, but I, I am a little bit curious. Is this actually a, a thing? Can I go to API Barnes and Noble .com? I don't think so. Uh, so we're just going to go ahead and avoid that. But you get the idea. So we'll, we'll change this back to localhost port 3000 in this case, and we'll hit save. Oops, we're going to want to change this to HTTP, not HTTPS. Once we're done with this, you'll see that we already have this post in our application. We can right click new post. I'm actually gonna open up the API section right here so you can watch this happen. Let's say uh, test two and case two. Once we click create post, you can see in our API, it just creates that post for us. If we come over here to our API and refresh, we've created it. So we're already creating it, we're already reading it. We can click this, destroy it. We're already destroying it. The only thing that's gonna be a little bit harder is if I do something like this, and then we try to edit this post. So we come in here, we edit this to another, or let's say an edited post with more words here. If we hit edit here, it'll tell us that the update method is protected. So to change this, all we have to do is come into our post controller and inside of our post controller, we wanna scroll down to wherever we're doing the post update. And basically the way this works is you can, um, you can either use like a save call similar to how you do the create, uh, or you can use something called update attributes inside of your uh, at post here. Basically, we can't use the update. I don't entirely remember the reason why, uh, but if we try to now run this, we change this to another edited post with more words, we hit update, and now you can see we're calling this update here. We do have unpermitted parameters being fired off. Uh, you could of course permit these if you want to. It really depends on how you wanna run this. Okay, my VS code just crashed. Uh, you can see here it's telling us that we have unpermitted parameters here. Basically in our API, we can uh, just, I guess, stop the server, do a code dot in our API to open this up. And then we can come into our controller and we can just try to allow whatever these parameters are. So let's go into app controllers, post controller, scroll down to the bottom. Remember, this is our API. So you would expect the uh, API creator to have these allowed for you. But in this case, because we're creating both, we'll just go ahead and we'll allow this. So we'll say ID, title, body, created, at, and updated, at. We can save this. Now we can do a Rails S inside of our API again. Refresh this one and let's try to edit this post. Another edited post two, click update. And now we're no longer getting that issue. So that that is something where you'd have to expect the remote to handle it properly. But if they don't, you can run into some issues. It doesn't ultimately matter because you're not seeing the issues on your end but you get the idea. We're now having all of these things appear here. We can show these, we can edit these, we can destroy these. But yeah, hopefully this was helpful and interesting. Hopefully you enjoyed seeing active resource being used and hopefully I will see you in the next one.